Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with a new project tutorial. So this is my photo storage box. Um, I'm most likely going to do a companion to this. I'm not sure if it's going to be inserts for this or a folio that fits in this. I haven't decided yet. But for now, this is a standalone project that you can do to store your pictures. So we've got a little box in here. This is about seven and, I want to say seven and a half. Where's my ruler? Right there. Um, sorry, I started this like three weeks ago. Uh, yeah, about seven and a half by five and a half high and about one and three quarters inches deep. So there's your little base. The camera just slides down over the top of this. And on the front of this, I've got a little shaker lens piece. I've got my little flash cube that I did end up doing out of acetate. Um, I had an alternative one that I posted a picture of um, yesterday that I had done completely out of cardstock and then had matted it with some metallic paper. And you could go that route as well. I will actually leave both versions in the tutorial. Um, but I really like this one once I got it to work the way I wanted it to. So I've got just some doodle bug buttons out of my stash on the side here. I cut some little, and I'm sorry, my autofocus is off and it's going in and out again. I'm not sure why. Um, some fireworks out of some glitter paper with uh, my Cricut Joy. I've got some of the brads and enamel dots and things from the collection kit. This is one of the stickers. Just went around the outside edge of this with um, Doodlebug Chunky Twine out of my stash again. On the end here, I did like a little wrist strap type piece on this end, and I used some of the tags from the tag and frame ephemera pack. So you've got a little camera, you've got the little ice cream and the popsicle, one that says never grow up, and then smiles made here. And then on the back, we have another shaker, but this has a little photo mat that pulls out from behind your little shaker here. And of course, it doesn't want to shake for me right now, because of course it doesn't. Let's, there we go. There, they're finally moving for me. So yeah, so this was with one of the chipboard frames from the paper collection as well. So um, that's it. It's actually not super hard to make so we will get going on the tutorial next okay so the first thing we are going to build is the base for our box so we're going to start with two pieces of chipboard that are five and a half by seven and a half we're going to wrap those with cardstock that is nine and a half by seven and a half I am going to cover the back of my chipboard with tape and get the backing off. You're going to use our one inch spacers. And of course, if you don't have the spacers, you can always use um, chipboard scraps and make some one inch spacers, or you can um, just lightly score your paper one inch and one inch and use those marks to line up your cardstock, or I'm sorry, your chipboard in the center of your cardstock. So there is one side, or one piece that is. Let's get the second one. Okay. 
Okay. All right, I'm gonna set those aside. Our side pieces, you need one piece that is seven and a half by one and three quarters, and two pieces that are five and a half by one and three quarters to mat our um, seven and a half inch piece. You need a piece of cardstock that is three and three quarters by nine and a half. You're going to continue to use our one inch spacers. I've got the entire back of this piece covered with tape as well. I'm going to go ahead and get the backing off of this. And put this one down. Cardstock for our two smaller pieces is going to be three and three quarters by seven and a half. And again, our other two pieces are one and three quarters by five and a half for the chipboard. I am using the black chipboard again just because um, it's going to give a cleaner look on the inside of the box so that you're not going to have to do any matting there which just saves you some time and some paper. Get to the edge of my score tape here. We're doing good. There we go. Okay. Put that down. And our last piece, again, seven and a half by three and three quarters. Chipboard is one and three quarters by five and a half. So, got that one down. Go ahead and move the scoreboard out of the way. And then we are going to fold our cardstock around all of our chipboard pieces. And you, of course, could do the whole wrapping process one at a time. Um, I just like to do you know, all of one step, since it's somewhat repetitive to me, it just seems easier to do it this way. So again, we're just wrapping cardstock around our chipboard. I'm not getting too crazy with, you know, really burnishing this down because Ultimately, we're going to cut out some corners and things here, and it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. But you absolutely could burnish these with the bone folder if you want to, and sometimes I do that, but honestly, I've kind of decided after having done this method for a very long time at this point, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to start with our two cover pieces. We are going to wrap, or I'm sorry, cover, not cover two main pieces. We're going to wrap these like you would wrap your cover pieces for the lay flat album method. So we're going to cut out our corners on our fold lines. Okay. Then we're going to fold over and miter. Okay, 
again. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap these. As you know, I like to use a combination of score tape and glue just because then I don't have to burnish this down nearly as hard or for as long because that glue, or I'm sorry, the tape will help this grab immediately when we wrap this. And then, um, you know, we can just do a little bit lighter burnishing than we would have to do if we're using just glue. I do that because of the tendon issue in my hands. Um, not carpal tunnel, it's another one that just affects like across here. It's not like the whole wrist, it's just like up and I don't know. I don't remember the name of it. It's got a really weird name. Um, but this seems to make it a little bit easier on me. And the whole easy wrap method for album covers is much easier on my hands in general um, than the older method is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get, whoops, the backing off of my tape all the way around. And then I'm gonna come in here with some glue and I'm gonna run the glue along the edge of the chipboard. And then up in the center section, I am keeping it off of the score tape because it's not really necessary to get it over the score tape. And sometimes even though you can get glue on the score tape, it's not gonna hurt anything. If you get too much, it can cause the score tape to lift, which kind of defeats the purpose, so. Just a little tip there. Okay, so I'm pushing up against the chipboard with my bone folder and then over and down. Okay. Along the chipboard edge, fill in the center, burnish over and down. All right. Again, we get our back and off of our tape. And this is a little thing I got on Amazon that's actually supposed to be to like weed vinyl. Works perfectly for getting <laughs> the backing off of the score tape. I'm really liking it. And I bought it like totally just on a whim because I was like, oh, I wonder. All right, we're gonna set these to the side for right now. First one we're gonna deal with for our sides is gonna be our long bottom piece. This is the seven and a half inch long. We're gonna go ahead and cut our corners out. And we are going to miter, and you don't want to get, especially because we are doing a box, we don't want to get too aggressive when we're mitering, which you don't have to be like, you know, super aggressive anyway, even when building an album base this way. But since we're doing the box and these pieces are going to wrap out and around, we kind of want to um, not get too nuts. Okay, so we are going to glue just these two small end tabs down, okay? 
And I probably should have done glue on there as well because now I'm going to have to burnish more than I would like to, but that's okay. Okay. And the other end. And over. Okay. So, two small pieces. We're going to go ahead and cut out the corners on these as well. And miter. going to do here is I'm going to grab my scoreboard again and I'm going to take this bottom piece I'm just going to set it here and on this one of my two shorter pieces I am going to fold over one end only and burnish it down okay Then I am going to take this, and this is where it's going to be just a teensy bit tricky. We want this piece to sit in an exact corner. Okay, we don't need any space because we don't need it to, you know, it's not going to flex, it's not going to move but we need it lined up exactly. So what I'm gonna do is grab a couple of clips here. And I'm gonna do this to the outside of my box here. And I'm just using my scoreboard to help get that corner perfectly straight, okay? I'll leave that sitting like so for just a minute. And when you let go, it is going to try to stand back up, and that's fine. And then I'm going to take my other end. Fold over and burnish down. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the other end. So I'm going to get glue on this tab. I'm going to use my scoreboard to help me out here. And I am going to get right down in that corner. And I'm going to clip this on. Okay. So I think this slid more than it should have. Okay, so we got to help me wrap. Got to say a really nasty word here. Because <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, there we go. One end's fine, the other end decided to fight with me a little bit. So 
Actually, I'm going to have to pull this off and re-glue because it's not quite right. So yeah, I'm going to just very carefully peel this off and re-glue this in because it did not want to play nicely. My other end is fine. It's just this side that decided it doesn't want to go where it's supposed to go. And I can actually do it up that way as well, and that will work just fine too. Okay, so I'm going to clip this for just a minute, and I'm going to, whoops, it's not going to hang nail in there. I'm going to set this aside to dry for just a minute, and then I will be right back. Okay, so giving that a few minutes to dry. I am going to come in just because it's going to make this whole process easier. And I'm going to go ahead and do score tape on my edges on my side pieces here that are now attached. And I should have done that on those two corners because then I wouldn't have had the one um, slide on me and have to pull it apart and fix it. Um, which is fine. All right. So we are going to start with one side. And again, we're going to use our scoreboard to help us. Okay, so this is going to sit on here like so, and we're going to use the back of our scoreboard to help line this one up. Okay, I'm going to get the backing off of my score tape. And obviously, if you wanted to do this with all the little strips that you cut and score and fold and all of that and put it together that way, you could absolutely do that. Personally, I hate that method of box building. So I don't do it if I can help it. Okay, so I'm pushing this all the way up, making sure I'm centered exactly on here where I need to be. And then I can lay it flat and burnish that down. It's like I have a bum folder here somewhere. Okay, so there's one side. We're going to do the same thing with the other side. And now you can see why I'm using the black chipboard because even though there's a slight color difference, it actually looks much worse on camera than it is in real life, but that's okay. Um, it's not as obvious, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. I have allergies absolutely killing me the last couple of weeks. Um, okay, so I'm pushing this up against the side of my, or the top of my scoreboard, I guess it really is. And again, pushing that top section down because the tape will help grab that immediately and then I can burnish down the rest. Okay, now we've got that. We can do the exact same thing with our sides. We'll do one side and then the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the backing off of my tape. There we go. Glue again. And I'm going to stand this up and push it into my corner and then burnish that down. Okay. To the opposite corner, exact same thing again. Stand it up. In the corner it goes and push it down. 
Okay? Lay it flat, and then we can burnish it from this side. Okay. So now this side, we should just be able to fold this in, and again, stand it up here, and do the exact same thing to get our other two sides adhered. So. We're gonna go, oops, stand up into the corner here. And our final corner. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to do it from this angle because at this point the box is completely constructed. We're just closing up that last edge. Okay, so here is your base. Next thing we're going to work on is our camera piece that's going to slide down over the top. So this is where you're going to want to get out your ruler and you're going to want to measure your base so that when you, if there's any adjustments that need to be made to the sizing of the piece that slides down over the top so that you can make those adjustments. Okay. So I am at, excuse me, seven and five eighths five and five eighths and one and three quarters. Double check my other side, one and three quarters. Actually, I'm just a hair over one and three quarters on this side, which is to be expected. And then lengthwise, we are at just a hair over seven and five eighths. Okay. So with those measurements in mind, I'm going to grab my chipboard and we're going to work on our cover piece that's going to slide down over the top of this. Okay, so for our, it's not really a lid, for our, our camera piece that's going to sit over our base, what I did is I just took a couple of scraps of my chipboard and I laid them on the sides, okay? Held them against the sides, and then I measured what that made my depth, okay? So, I should have grabbed a shorter one, but that's okay. Okay, so I measured. And then I did the same thing with them on the ends so that I could measure across this way as well, okay? Mine, and you'll want to try and do that just to make sure, mine came out that I needed chipboard that it was seven and seven eighths wide, and then I needed pieces for the ends that were two inches wide, okay? For the rest of it, I'm going seven inches high. Chipboard, I'm going six inches on the side. So these are five and a half, so it's going to come up another quarter of an inch above where the top of the base is. Okay. Then what I did is I just took those pieces, put them together the way they're going to actually go when it's assembled, and I just took my purple tape that I usually use for sticking down dies when I'm getting ready to die cut them just to make sure that this is going to slip down over this that it's not too loose that it's not too tight um, I did actually take scraps of the pattern paper because it's cartabella so it's a little bit heavier and I slid, slipped those down in between to make sure I still had good movement you don't have to do this step but if you want to make sure it's not going to be too tight I would suggest you know, just getting some painter's tape or washi tape or whatever and doing exactly this, okay? So I know my pieces are gonna fit. So mine ended up being seven by seven and seven eighths. So I need two pieces that size and then I need two pieces that are two by six. 
I'm just gonna pull my tape off of here. And we'll go from there. Okay, so we don't really need to do anything to the two two by six pieces. We're gonna set those aside. For our pieces to make our camera front, what I have done is I've gone in here and I've measured one inch down from the top, okay? So this is seven inches high, so one inch down. So you have six inches down here, one inch up here. And then I used a T-square, which this is my little bitty one for my Misty, but honestly, it's probably the sturdiest, it's much sturdier than the other one I have, so that's why I've been using it for this kind of thing. And I drew my line all the way across, okay? I then, find my center point, okay? Which we'll go ahead and do this on this other one as well, even though I've already got it on the one, okay? So I'm gonna go down one inch, which this actually, the base part of this is one inch. So I'm just lining this up so it's flush with the top of my chipboard. I'm taking my pencil and I'm drawing my line. Okay, flip it to the opposite side, line it up again. And across. Okay, now I'm gonna take my centering ruler and I'm going to find the center of my chipboard. So we're just under eight inches. So I'm gonna line this up. So I've got just a tiny, tiny bit of that four on each end over the side here, okay? And I'm gonna mark where that center piece is. And come back with my T-square and I'm gonna draw a line, okay? So now, the top part, you can see where I've got it drawn here, this is gonna be one and three quarters of an inch, okay? So again, I'm gonna take my centering ruler, and I'm gonna go seven eighths of an inch from each side of the center point, okay? And then just to make sure that I have done that correctly, I'm gonna measure and I am at one and three quarters, okay? So again, I take my T-square and I'm gonna draw a line, okay? Okay, I can go ahead and erase my center one because we're not actually cutting anything out of the center of this one. And then what I'm gonna do is measure over half an inch from this line. And I'm gonna mark. I'm gonna go half an inch this way. I'm gonna make a mark. And then I'm gonna go from the top here to my half inch mark, and I'm just gonna draw a line. Okay, and same thing on the other side. And that is what we're gonna cut out, okay? You can do it with a craft knife and a ruler. You can do it with a paper trimmer, with, um, uh, not new blade in it, or you can do it with scissors. So I am going to find my big scissors and I am going to cut right on that line down to the next line. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. Come up this line, and again, I'm going to cut. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So there's our camera front. So for the back piece, you can go through and measure again, or you can literally just lay the one you just measured and cut, trace where it needs to go, and cut this one out. And since it looks like I am exactly on, which I would think I should be, <laughs> it's me, so you never know. I'm going to go ahead and cut those pieces out as well. This side, and there we go. Other side. And there we go. We have the front and back of our um oh, that's right, okay. Front and back of our top. Okay. We are going to take and we need to cut a couple more pieces of chipboard and I am gonna just make sure that I've got these cut correctly okay I have two pieces that are apparently nothing written on them two and a half by two okay it's so two pieces two and a half by two and then one piece that is four by two. Okay, the four inch by two inch piece, just to make it easier on ourselves so we don't have that many more pieces that we have to attach together. What I have done is I've taken my trimmer, I have put in an old blade that I heat marked so I know it's for chipboard. I'm going to start at one and one eighth of an inch and I'm going to very lightly cut. Okay, I don't want to go all the way through. I just want it enough that I can bend this. Okay. I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. So one and one eighth and make another shallow cut. Okay. These are the pieces that are going to go on the top. We have our two pieces that are two inches by six inches that are going to be our sides. And now, even though normally... I don't like doing construction strips because this is shaped. It's going to be easier to use construction strips than it will be to wrap. Okay. So you need four pieces that are six inches by two and a half. With the two and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we are going to score this at one and a quarter. Okay. So you're just scoring this in half. Okay, these are going to be our side pieces. For our other pieces, I think I actually did these not quite where I wanted them, but that's okay. Let's see here. So for our two by four piece, we need a piece that is, I did it five and a half by three and a half, which is fine. This one, we're actually going to adhere this down. So let me grab, My score tape. Hold on one second. Actually, we're going to save that one. We'll do that one in a minute. We'll do our two smaller pieces first. So this is three and a quarter by four and a half. And that's going to go on here like so. Why did I not do this with... I think these were wrong, actually. I think those are wrong. Let me double check and I'll be right back. Okay, those were wrong. So for our two small two and a half by two inch pieces, you need cardstock that is five by four and a half. 
We are going to score this at one and a quarter on all sides. On both of those pieces. Okay. And then this is going to go down in here like so. What we need to do on both of these pieces is cut out the corners just along those score lines. Get on the score line there, it would really be helpful. <laughs> okay. on both of those. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one as far as scoring. So one and a quarter on all four sides. Okay. And then we're going to do an additional score line on the six and a half inch side at two and three eighths. And then I turn it and two and three eighths again. Okay. So this one, oops, on the second set of score lines, we're going to cut just up to the first line. Okay. And then we're going to cut out the corners on the score line other than that. And there we go. Okay, so this piece, go ahead and fold just the outside ones. This inside one will kind of fold on its own. Make sure you do get to the score line there. Um, we'll kind of fold on its own once we attach this. Okay, that's why that other one's there but we need those loose so that they can curve in and attach, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna glue this one just in the center section, okay? So I'm gonna line this up in the middle here. Okay, and we're not going to attach this one down just yet because we want it until we actually get it um, lined up and attached on here. Okay, so 
sorry, the cat thinks he's starving to death. He's not. So then we're going to glue, fold these in as well, and we're going to glue our other two pieces in the middle. Let's not glue it to my shirt. That would be kind of pointless. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to grab one of my base pieces and one of my side pieces. Okay. I can go ahead on one of them on one end and miter this because we are actually going to fold this one over and glue it down. Okay. I lost my thing over there. It is. Okay. All right. So there's that. This piece is going to attach. So let me move this out of the way. All right, so you want the chipboard for this piece to sit on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in. I'm going to miter this outside edge just a little bit. Okay. Again on this side. And the wrapped side of it is going to go towards the middle. Okay? So I am going to find my score tape. Where did it go? It's buried. I've got like seriously stuff everywhere. It took me a while to figure out exactly how I was going to do this. So it's a disaster in here right now. Okay. All right. So bolded piece towards this little, the viewfinder essentially on our camera. Okay. Pull my score tape off. Not my pick, that's my pencil. No wonder it does not want to work. I'm going to put glue on here. And I'm going to push this so that this chipboard is sitting on the inside of this one. Okay? And then push that down. And do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to fold miter and fold over one piece. Okay. The piece that is going to be on the opposite side, I'm going to miter that one. Okay, and really we can go ahead and miter this side as well. And I should have done it on that one and I didn't, but it'll be okay. And I'm going to add score tape. So I'm going to add score tape on this piece as well because I should put it on that one. I can get it on here actually right now and that will be just fine. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to get the backing off here. I am going to get glue. And again, I'm going to make sure that this 
chipboard is sitting on the inside of the chipboard we're attaching it to. Okay, so there's those. We're gonna do essentially the same thing with this one, only none of these are getting folded around. So these tabs will attach to this, these tabs and these tabs will attach on here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add score tape all the way across. ends. And yeah, I probably could have just gone straight across there and then cut it, but at this point I'm doing it a weird way and I'm going to continue. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with this center piece and we're going to do the exact same thing we did here. So I'm going to get the back and pick up the right tool, get the backing off, not draw lots of little lines because, you know, that's apparently what I'm doing today. And again, we're going to come in here. This one's going to be a little bit trickier because we've got these other pieces in place, but we're going to do the same thing. This is going to sit on the inside of that piece of chipboard, okay? All right, so this is what we look like from the opposite side right now, okay? So now we're going to take our other side, and we are going to attach it to this top piece, okay? Because this is gonna help us line these sides up and everything else up before we actually put those down. So I'm gonna flip this around so I can see what I'm doing. I'm get back and off of here. Do my glue again. And again, line it up so that it is on the inside of the big piece of chipboard. Okay? All right. So at this point, we can go ahead and bring up our two side pieces. Okay, so I'm going to do one of those at a time, just because I think that's probably going to be a little bit easier than trying to do both of them at once. But again, we're standing this up, we're bringing this down so that the small chipboard is sitting inside the big chipboard and we're just gonna bring that side over and down, okay? Do this other piece now. And we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, on the inside, and then bring that tab over and down, okay? So this is what we've got right now. Now, these pieces are gonna go down like so, okay? But we still need to glue this piece here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the backing off of this bottom tab that's gonna attach this. Did I miter that? I didn't. I meant to, sorry. Okay, so let me miter that really quickly, which would have been way easier before it was attached, but, you know, typical brain damage for me, so it didn't get mitered. Alright, okay. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do glue here. Because when we push this down and push that down, that is going to all attach. And you can reach up in here and get this pressed into place very easily. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. down and down and attach and there you go. Now all we have to do is glue down these two little pieces. They are going to overlap somewhat. If you want to trim them down so that they don't overlap, that's fine. I think I am actually going to take just a little bit off of that. Basically what I just put the tape on, so you know, I can redo the tape. That's okay. That way they're not overlapping. And the same thing on this side. And really, we can go ahead and just glue these because the way they're going down, if they they're not gonna cause any, they're not gonna slide out of place. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so there we go. Okay. All right. So now we've got our other pieces. So what we are going to do is go ahead and fold. These might actually be too wide now that I'm thinking about it. That's okay. We'll make it work. Well, that one will be okay because I scored it wrong. All right, so. And honestly, it's okay if these overlap on the sides. It's not really going to make a difference. So we're going to go ahead and just go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this to my chipboard. I'm going to go right up to my score line. Okay. And same thing on the other side. Let's get face the right way. That would be incredibly helpful. Okay. And then all we're going to do, well, first off, we're going to get some score tape on these outside edges so that. We don't have to worry about anything sliding on us. Okay. And I'm going to pull the backing off on the side. And put glue on here. And again, I want to make sure that this chipboard sits on the inside of the box. And this actually needed mitered on that bottom piece, and I didn't do it. So I will have to trim that just a tiny bit. Why is this? Actually, this is probably not sitting right. Ooh. Okay, what did I do? I did something. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, since I had to pull that off anyway, and miter, and miter, and miter. Yeah, I don't know what I just did, but it was not correct. Go high enough up. Okay. So 
go ahead and do my glue since it's now lined up correctly. And go ahead and push that down. Come on the other side here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Again, it's almost easier to look at it from the bottom because then you can see that everything is in where it's supposed to be, that your chipboard on the bottom is flush, there we go, okay. You can pull this off of your end piece, add your glue, and then go over and down and you've sealed off one side of your box. Okay? We're going to repeat on the other side with my one that I somehow scored wrong. It's okay. Fix that in just a second. So I'm going to glue this on here. Get my score tape attached. I'm going to miter before I put it on here and realize I didn't do that. Okay, and then this one, other than we score that, I'm actually just going to cut a quarter of an inch off of it because it will be fine. Again, score tape. Okay. Oh. And miter because, you know, obvious some days. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to line this up. Let me show you on this one exactly what it is I'm looking for here. I am looking for, hold on. Okay. I am looking for that chipboard to line up exactly in there. Okay. I know it's exact and I'm going to go ahead and get my glue on here. side. There we go. And then our top flap. down. All sorts of random things stuck to me. And this will slide perfectly on there. 
and there is our box. Okay, um, I'm kind of trying to decide if I'm going to end up doing any kind of strap or something that's going to kind of go on the bottom here. And what I actually might do are just a couple of tabs with um, maybe magnets that will attach to the bottom of this box. So when you pick it up, you're not going to like lose the bottom. But there is our box itself. Um, next thing we're going to do, even though we're not ready to put it on yet, is we are going to make our lens. Okay, so this it just lost its little sticky thing um, is one of the Sizzix shaker domes. This is the smaller ones. These are two and a half inches across. So what we're going to do is take a couple of pieces of chipboard and we're going to make a circle that that's going to get glued down to. Okay. So I have a piece of black chipboard that is eight and one eighth of an inch long and half of an inch wide. Okay. I am going to carefully pull and drag to loosen this up and start to curve this. You don't want to get too crazy because the chipboard will come apart and like come up like into layers. Okay. So I've got that. What I want to do is take some clips and I'm going to put glue on one end. And I'm going to take a piece of cardstock that is also half of an inch wide. Length we're not too worried about right now. And we're going to glue that end. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and bring this around. Just kind of hold it in a circle. Kind of pull it tight until your ends of your chipboard meet. Okay. And kind of, you know, make a mark where that ends up being in relation to where you attached your end here, because we will end up cutting this off after we glue it. So I guess you really don't need to make a mark. Okay. I guess, honey, it's not quite dinner time yet. Okay, so we're gonna kind of bring this around. We're gonna bring it in tighter than we actually need it. So we can bring this around, I can pull it quite tight enough, there we go, to where these touch. And then we're just going to press this cardstock down onto our glued areas, okay? Whatever we have left, we're going to trim off, which it just tried to pull up on me, so we're going to have to kind of finagle it a little, little bit here, but that's okay. Just totally came apart on me. This is probably the most difficult part of this entire project. I spent a good hour figuring out how I was going to do this, and as you can see, it's still not perfect, but when it's all said and done, it's going to be pretty dang cool. Okay. No, Gus. No. You don't need to scratch my chair or my leg. We're not going to starve to death. Okay. So we've got that. We're going to clip on the seam of the chipboard. And of course, I've got glue all over my fingers, so it's trying to stick to my fingers. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now we're going to let this sit. I'm just going to clip all the way around. So that's time to set up. We're going to let that sit for a minute, and then we're going to go around it with one more piece of chipboard. Again, half an inch wide. I don't have a length on this because 
we're going to trim it after we figure out how long it needs to be. So while that's sitting there drying for a second, I'm going to go ahead and start training this piece. Um, being gentle and pulling as I push down with the bone folder to kind of get it loosened up so that it will bend but not enough where it's going to try to, because you can just barely see there. Maybe. It's going to focus for me. Um, how it's starting to try and want to come apart into layers, okay, which is not what we want it to do. So this time, you're going to start in the middle so that your seams do not line up, okay? So we've got our little seam here. We want to start this in the middle so that we're covering over and reinforcing that seam. And I'm going to start it out with a clip. Okay, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to clip it. And you don't want to get like too much glue where it's seeping out, even though you're not going to see it in the end result. It just you know, a little bit easier, okay? We're gonna bring this around. We're gonna bring this around, making sure it's tight together. And then I'm gonna figure out where we're gonna cut this, but we're not gonna cut this off yet. We're gonna glue this other side down first. So I'm going all the way around and I'm clipping and then I'm going to come around with this one and figure out where I need to cut it. Okay, so now I can go ahead and do that, come around come around and it's going to come down flush over here. And again, I'm going to clip right on that seam. And then I'm going to add a couple more and give this a minute to set up again. Okay. Once this sets up, we're going to go around it one more time with another piece of cardstock just to finish off the edge. And ultimately when it goes on your project, you will go around this with um, a piece of pattern paper as well. But for now, at least then we've got our ring ready so that when we get to the point of actually decorating the front of our box and putting our camera lens on there, we've got it ready to go, okay? I'm gonna give this just another minute kind of checking here. So far so good. But again, we're going to cover over that seam. So I'm going to start with the seam onto the middle part of our next little piece of paper here. Okay. And again, where that seam was where I'm starting this, I am going to clip it. And then we're going to come around. And this time, if our cardstock overlaps, it's not going to matter. We can just go all the way around until it overlaps. So we're going to go around and around and around and around. I'm going to work it to make sure it's nice and flat. And flat. Again, around, make sure it's flat, make sure it's even, that it's not taller than your ring, and that it's flush up against the side. Okay, so I'm going to add literally a bunch more clips to this, so pretty much they're everywhere, and I'm going to let this sit for a good couple of hours to make sure it's cured and set 
and done and is not going to come apart on us. When we go to decorate the front and put this on, we will use um, hot glue to attach the dome to it. But before we do that, we will use hot glue to attach this down to the front of our camera. Um, we will punch a two and a half inch circle of patterned paper that's going to go in the middle. We'll put our shaker fill in and then we will put this down over the top of it. And then up around this rim so that you're not seeing the glue and all the, you know, inner workings. Most likely I'll use some of my doodle bug chunky twine and go around the outside edge of that to finish that off. But we're not to that point yet. I'm going to set this aside. Okay, let's work on our inserts for our camera box. Okay, so now we're going to make our little flash cube that's going to sit on top of our camera box. And we are going to do this with cardstock, although you could do it with um, acetate and it would be super cute. And I may actually end up on the final project doing it that way. But it would be the same um, basic, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? process to do this with a piece of acetate as opposed to a piece of cardstock that you would then mat. So we're going to start with a piece that is six and a half by five and a half. With the six and a half at the top, we are going to score at one and a half, three, four and a half, and six. We're then going to turn. We're going to score at half an inch. Two inches, three and a half, and five. Okay, so we're going to trim this down. So this is what it should look like. You have a whole bunch of little squares. We're going to trim it down so that it looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one to the side. So with your half inch towards you, you're going to cut a slight miter on either side of the score marks in the middle. Okay. All right. Then you're going to cut, rather than go all the way through the corner, because we need a little bit more meat to glue this thing together, we're going to cut at an angle. In an angle, maybe. And then we're going to do it from this outside edge as well. So it's colder down here this morning than I thought it would be, and I'm a little bit chilled right now. So, all right, so there we go there. Now, with these two tabs here, you're going to do the same little kind of arrow shaped miter that we did in the middle on both sides. Okay. With me so far. So there we go. Now we are going to do, oh, I know we didn't score. That's what's wrong. I knew there was some other score line. And honestly, it'll probably be easier to do it this way. So you've trimmed those pieces. Now, right here with our little trimmed edge facing towards us, we want to come in here at two and a half inches, and you're just going to score until you get to the center section. Okay? Turn it around, and on this side, we're going to be at four inches, and again, we're just going to go until we get to that little center section. Okay? So we're going to cut an angle here again, and then we are going to cut along that score line until we get to the center, okay? Same thing here, I'm gonna do an angle, and then I'm gonna cut up that score line, okay? Now, you're going to turn it so all of your little tabs are facing away from you and you're going to cut up the score line like so. Okay, 
you may have to come back and trim just a tiny bit if you didn't get right on the score line when you were trimming, which I didn't. But that's okay. You can figure that out. Okay. And same thing over here. Okay. So there's that. Now we're going to go up and up and then we are going to angle and cut out a little wedge. Okay, so there we go. We have our piece. Actually, I think I cut those wrong, but yes, okay. So I'm sorry, on these we do need to cut these as well. Apologize, I was looking right at the silly thing and it wasn't making sense to me until I had it to this point. Okay, all right, so you're gonna fold and burnish. There's a phone folder. Every score line, okay? And that may mean you fold it over, burnish it, and unfold it, but that's okay. So we do want to get all of these kind of started. All right, so to assemble this, you're gonna put glue here and here and fold this piece up, okay? Same thing again and again until we get this whole little thing rolled up and around, okay? But I've gotta find my glue because I'm not sure where I put it after the retreat. So bear with me one second. Okay, found the glue. So we're gonna start rolling our cube together. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. We'll see if I can get this unclogged, like always. I'm gonna have to turn on my heater because I am freezing to death down here. Oh my gosh, I can barely hang on to stuff. Okay, so glue on this tab, glue on that tab, okay? We're going to fold these in. You're going to line up to the outside edge. The outside edge. And just kind of very carefully burnish that down. Okay, so we're good there. We can do our next two tabs. And I totally could have created Cricut file or an SVG for this, but just for those of you that may make this that don't have the electronic cutting machines, I wanted to make this an easy one for you to do as well. Okay, so again, I'm just burnishing that down. And we're flush, and then we're going to fold over, and it will be just a hair short, but this is the part that's going to go down on the bottom, so it's not going to matter. Okay? And again, and this time I am just going to lay it down on my desk and just gently push down on it. You don't want to push too hard and crush it, obviously. Um, but that will be our little flash cube that's going to sit on here. Okay, so I've been working on matting the outside of my camera. I've got um, part of it done. I've got another little part here to do. But I thought I would put together my shaker. So I have our ring that we made. And mine ended up kind of wonky because I left it sitting for too long. So I ended up... Um, this is just a jelly jar that 
we don't know what happened to the lid for that I've been using just like for my glue sometimes. And honestly, this worked better than the way I had originally showed you, but either will work. Um, that I still took my little half inch strips of the black chipboard, you know, kind of trained them to roll with the bone folder like I showed you earlier. Um, but I ended up wrapping it around like the top part of this glass and it actually worked really well. Made it a little bit easier. So all I've done is I just glued my circle down onto some of the cardstock and then with my craft knife that I misplaced in literally the last like three minutes. Oh my gosh. Just went around and just cut that around. Giving that a minute to dry. I've got this little piece that I punched out with um, from one of the cut apart pieces that is going to sit down inside. I was going to pop it up, but I really don't think it needs it. I think it's going to be fine just putting it in here flat. So I'm going to just drop this down in here and get it centered. Okay. And then I've got the magical uh, embellishment pack or shaker pack here. And I'm going to just pour some of these in here. Make sure I get some of those little icons and some stars and things. Um, let's see if that looks like it's going to be enough. Get all of that in there, not just stuck to my hand, would be incredibly helpful very dry here in Utah so it's like stuff gets really staticky really easily um, I think that's gonna be good so now I'm gonna just take there is of course adhesive on the edge of the domes but honestly I don't know that I totally trust it to stick down on something like this so um, I'm actually gonna that's why I have that out still. Um, kind of lift up. I'm using my little pokey thing here that I've been using to get the backing off my glue. And I'm actually just going to pull that whole thing off because it's okay if you're just putting it on a card or something. For something like this, um, I don't think it's going to be strong enough. So I am going to glue this on top. Um, I am just going to use art glitter, although I could use hot glue if I wanted to, um, but art glitter should be fine. I've glued these down with art glitter before and not had an issue. So, um, or actually you could use glossy accents to glue that down. All right, so I will just give this some time to dry. After it dries, I most likely am going to take some Doodlebug Chunky Twine. And I'm going to do the black and I'll just go around the top part of this with the chunky twine just to finish that off so that you're not seeing the edge of that little shaker dome where you can see that my glue is drying right now. So um, once that's done, of course, then you would put this on your camera. Okay, so I've got my camera lens on the front. I've got um, one of the chipboard frames from the collection on the back and then I just cut down one of the four by six cut aparts and added a little tab. But before I did that, I added two layers of acetate so that I could put the other little shaker pieces I had in there. So flash cube. So we've got this one that I did. I took the Sizzix paper and I scored it to kind of give it a little starburst pattern and I could use that one. However, I actually thought of a better way to do the shaker. And I know I literally just said that wasn't going to work with the acetate, but I figured it out. Okay, so I have a piece of black cardstock, one and a half by five and a half. I'm going to score this at one and a half, three. Actually, that should be four and a half, not five and a half. So I'm going to just cut this off with scissors because it will be fine. Okay, so there's that one. 
gold and burnish. Okay. So these are going to be the bottom and the sides. We're going to start. So this is five and a half by two and a half. Two and a half at the top of the scoreboard. We're going to score this at half an inch. Turn it, score it half an inch again. Okay. And then I am going to score this at one half, two, three and a half, and five. Okay. So there you go. You can see the score lines in there. Okay, so as I was editing, I actually came up with an even easier way to do this. So I've got my scored acetate here. I am going to go ahead and go around on all those little half inch lines. Well, not all of them, I guess. And where's my. Okay. And I'm going to add score tape. It's going to be easier to do this prior to cutting our tabs on this one. Okay, you don't need to put it in those corners because those are actually going to get cut out. And what we're going to do, so here's my one and a half by four and a half inch piece. I cut it, I scored it, and then I went back in and I took just a hair off of one of the long sides, okay? So we've got that ready to go. We're gonna take this and we're gonna make tabs. So I'm gonna cut at an angle so that I get a tab. And again, okay, just tore that a little bit, but that's okay. The other corner and then we'll do the sides. So all I'm doing is just mitering that into that corner so that I have tabs. Okay. Then you're going to come along where those score lines are and you're going to cut up to the score line and cut out a little wedge. Okay. So you'll see, now we have tabs on this side. Those are staticky and do not want to go down. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fold and burnish all of my score lines. Okay. The heavier acetate like this, once you have folded and burnished really well, it typically will stay put. Okay. Let's get my sides. All right, so the way I re originally recorded it and the way it is on my actual box, I had done these to the inside, okay? And then I sat there and I thought about it as I was watching and trying to edit out the like 45 minutes it took to make this, and I went, no, that's not the easy way to do this. This is. So we're gonna start with our two middle sections. That open so I can actually get my backing off. Okay, and we are going to go like so. Okay, and we're going to wrap the acetate to the outside because I ended up doing a piece of pattern paper around this outside so it went across the clear back piece of this because it just needed it. Like once I got it done, I was like, no, it, it needs something else. 
So I'm going to lay this in here up against that score line, making sure it's right between the other two score lines. I'm just going to push that down. Okay. So much easier than the way I did the first one. Like easy enough, I am tempted to go pull the first one off of my box and replace it with this one because this is going to look better. Okay, so again, all right, halfway there. So now we're going to do the exact same thing and bring the sides up. Then, and what I'd had to do on the other one, on the bottom inside and on the sides on the inside, I had to kind of force a little square in on each of those pieces because you were seeing the tape, which of course we don't want. So this should fold up exactly like so. And we're gonna put that down and down and down. So much better and so much easier than the other one that I had recorded that, like I said, took almost 45 minutes. <laughs> All right, so right here, this is where we're going to need to add our shaker fill, okay? So we're just going to pretend I'm adding shaker fill because mine is already on there and I don't want to scrub the top of the box, so I'm going to leave it alone even though this one's going to look better. It's going to bug me, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to pull the backing off here. You would, of course... I would just kind of fold that back a little bit, put your fill in, get your backing off. For crying out loud. Which actually I'm going to open up another one of those. I have several of that one. Okay. So I had used the rest of this one on my other one. And I may end up making a second one of this box, so Let's see. Or I might just swap it out. It's okay. We'll see how this goes. Alright, so I'm going to put some of this in here. Like so. And then I'm going to fold this one down and over. And again, And there you have your little shaker cube, okay? All I did after that is I just took a piece of the pattern paper. I cut it to four and a half by one and a half. And then I just took it, I laid it on on this side, wrapped it around, figured out where I needed to crease it, and then just put it down back. I have another little scrap here somewhere. Hold on, bear with me one second. There we go. So is this? Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to cut a little piece of this. I'm actually going to go just a tiny bit past four and a half. And all I'm going to do is lay this on here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to lay this on here and just kind of hold it where it needs to sit. And I'm going to figure out where that crease is going to be. I could score it, but I want this to fit exactly and fit tightly around this. So that's where I'm just kind of doing it that way. And then I'm just going to manually fold and burnish. Same thing this direction. Fold and burnish. And then I'm going to take my score tape again because you're not going to see on the ends. Okay, so that's where we're going to put the score tape. It's just going to be on these ends. Okay. 
want it to really stick. So I am going to use a decent amount, and I'm just going to where that fold is. Okay, I'm not going across the back part, which this one was not a good one to use for this because I wasn't thinking about which pattern was on the inside, but you'll get the basic idea. Okay. So I would do this, and then I would pull that score tape backing off and adhere this so that it wraps around like so. And like I said, this one, just because of the pattern that's on the inside, doesn't really work. So I wouldn't actually use that particular piece to finish this off. But just for demonstration purposes, then it goes around the back. You see what is ever on this little back side here through the cube. But you're covering up all of those, you know, little ugly places where you see the tape through the acetate. Because that, you're going to glue down on the top of the camera. So there you go.